In this video, I'd like to talk about uh, data centralization, uh, talk about uh, how you can uh, create a workflow, why we'd want to create a workflow uh, for data centralization, um, uh, how you can use data upload and validation as part of that, and, uh, and also examine how the workflow is created. So the why, the what, and uh, the how. So why would you want to perform data centralization? Well, you can imagine a city, they have different departments such as planning, they have uh, a engineering department, perhaps a surveying department. Each of them are collecting data in their own way. They're collecting it either using GPS devices or they're doing aerial photography or any kind of any number of ways of, of collecting information. Uh, traditionally the information goes into file, folders or somewhere and it lives in separate areas. Uh, there's duplication that occurs, uh, there's, it's harder to report on that information and it's harder to share that information. So one of the main uh, uh, returns on investment or, or, or uh, uh, advantages of data centralization is being able to reduce the duplication, have access to that information and share that information. Uh, so now I'd like to show you a demo of uh, data upload and validation. So imagine you have people in the field or in a remote office that have data, perhaps a different organization. They want to provide data to you uh, to go into your database. Uh, let's go through a demo of how that would work. So here I'm using FME server to show this. And I'll log out and I'll show you the full experience. So here we go. I'm logging in. And I've got some data to provide, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through. It's going to go through a, a few validation checks as part of this uh, workflow. So I come in here, demos, uh, and I start, I'm going to start with this workspace here, schema validation. And you can make this much more transparent to the end user, but this is the out-of-the-box experience. I can click Browse, and I'm going to first upload some invalid schema features so we can see that experience. I'm going to upload that. I'm also going to put in my email so I get... Uh, alerted to the uh, to what's going on there. If it's uh, if it's successful, and maybe I don't need an alert. If it isn't successful, then perhaps I uh, want an email. So there's some invalid schema features. I'm going to run those, upload it, and it tells me, uh, okay, well I'm going to send you email if there was any problems. So I'll check my email. Oh, there there's a message that came in, so I can check that. An error occurred in the workflow, and the stop abbreviation attribute is missing from the bus stops layer and also the entire bus routes layer is missing so automatically I know that there's problems with that schema I can go in and fix that data and let's go back and uh, say we're really quick we fix it and we come in here and we're gonna select now I'm gonna go with some invalid features so there's a feature validation step that's happening as well um, so there's a schema validation a feature validation which we're doing now and then the last step is to actually load that into the database so now I'm going to do the invalid features. So it's going to run. Should pass that first te test now uh, and fail the second step, basically. Okay, now I can flip over to that. And I've got a message from the FME server. Oh, uh, there was a feature validation step that failed. Uh, a feature in the bus route layer shorter than 100 feet and there are some blank values etc. You can clean up this formatting, I just uh, did it fairly quickly, but um, there ha it does give me feedback on what the problems are. So pass the schema validation but failed the feature validation so you can probably guess what's going to happen next. I'm going to go and I'm going to fix that information quickly. I will do valid features, sure. I will upload them. choose those features, the valid features, run them through, and I'm not going to receive an email in this case because it's going to succeed. So I could configure it to give me an email if I want it, so now I want to talk about how this workflow is created. How do we chain those steps together? So we've got three different uh, steps here, three different workspaces is what we call them. The first is the schema validation workspace, the second is feature validation, uh, and then this, the last one is loading into the database. Each one of these can run on their own and I'll, I'll open up the schema validation and I'll show you what it's doing 
that helps us uh, glue this workflow together. So what it does is it actually, this workspace, it reads the schema of that data coming in, uh, determines what its layers names are, what its attribute names are, uh, and then we go on and in the first case we test, we say, is this the bus routes layer? Uh, if it's not, we have a transformer that will send a message out, if this layer doesn't exist at all, I should say, it'll send a message out that says the bus routes layer is missing. And it'll start with a D012 error, which is sort of a unique identifier I've defined um, so that I can find these log messages afterwards. So they're logged to this window if you're in Workbench, but also logged to a separate log file, which we can retrieve later. Um, we also look and we see, is there a line ID attribute? If there is not a line ID attribute, not found, then we come up here and we send a message, uh, line ID is missing from the bus routes layer. And this uh, continues on, logging all the error messages to the log file. Uh, it's completely dis dis disconnected. It doesn't need to, to run with other, any other workflow. Uh, it can run on its own, or we can glue it together, which we'll see in a second. The second uh, step in that workflow uh, was the feature validation. So here we're actually reading the, the, the data uh, from that uh, file and here we're calculating the length of the bus routes and then we're going to test and see is there any bus route that's smaller than 100 feet? If there is, it's probably not a bus route so we want to flag and say there's a problem with this data. And so again all we do is we log a message starting with a specific uh, unique ID that we can find later and again then we continue on is it an integer is the line ID an integer if it's not we're gonna log out a message saying that uh, it's a non-integer into the log file so again this step can run completely by itself disconnected puts all of its information into the log file and then the final step is to load it into the database and again this step can run on its own all by itself or it can be connected into a workflow and one of the things I do in this step is I also take in the job ID and use that as part of the name. So maybe you're getting multiple bus route uploads from different users, from different organizations. Uh, you can mark them by the job ID that FME server is providing in. And I'll show you how you can uh, work this all together. So let's take a look at how you can connect all these workflows together now. In order to connect one job to the next job, or one step to the next, we need to know uh, when, the, when one completes. And the way we do that is with FME Server's notification ser uh, server or service. So I'm going to log into the admin interface for FME Server and go to the notifications. Uh, well, two, I should say. There's two topics. If I click on the topics uh, tab, there's two. There's one called job failure and there's one called job success. So anytime a job runs, a message is sent uh, to these topics that says, uh, well, here, here are the results, uh, this many features, that sort of thing. Now, what happens is we can define a subscription that will pay attention to these topics. Um, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to define a controller that can that can listen on those topics and then take action based on the results of the last job. So let's bring in that job controller workspace right here. Okay, so now how do we actually tell this workspace to listen uh, to those messages, listen to those topics for messages? Well, that's part of the publish process now. Uh, there's a new service in there uh, called the subscription service. You here, so pretty pretty standard publish so far. Um, if you've used FME Server before, pick your uh, repository, uh, upload that workspace. And then here you're going to click on this subscription service, and this is where you can tell this workspace to listen and respond to messages sent to specific topics. And the topics I'm going to choose are those two that receive the messages when a job completes. I finish, I click publish, that workspace goes up there, and now this controller workspace is ready to listen to those messages and to start to take action on them. Those messages that are sent in uh, are sent in a standard format and what we have here is a custom format that if I zoom in on this, uh, what it will actually do is when it receives a message, when this uh, workspace, the controller receives a message from a topic, it will be able to determine the client that sent it, the, the date, the, the job ID, uh, which workspace was used, the user, 
and also you get the log file contents and that's very key because that's where we put the messages from each of the separate steps uh, so we could deal with them later. The first thing we do once we get the message is we come in and we decide is it a uh, workspace that we care about? Is it one of the three that is in that workflow? If it is, so say it's schema validation, the next thing we want to know is was it successful? If it was, we want to go through and we want to actually look at the log, the errors or the log messages that, that we wrote in there. So they all start with D012 error, which is how I defined it. Uh, if there are messages, then I can I can come over to here and put them all together into one into one message body, if you will. And then I use the XML templator to create a little snippet of XML uh, that uses some keywords that FME server will be able to understand. So it understands if I send a to and a subject in this format that that's where it should be sent and that should be the subject. Also I'm putting in the message contents from an attribute. Uh, so then I use the FME server notifier and here I go and I notify it and I'm notifying on a topic called workflow failure. And so when a message comes through here that will be sent to this topic right here, workflow failure. What happens then is there's a subscriber here called workflow failure email. And if I look at that, that uh, workflow, that this this um, uh, subscription will basically take that mess the messages from that XML element and send them out to whoever's defined in the email. So in in the previous case uh, back here, I'm just hard coding. Sorry, pardon me. In here. I'm just hard coding the uh, the two, but I could pull that from the actual job itself, um, and and I get to define who it goes to, the subject, all of that stuff, and using those keywords. So, if there's a problem, it sends a message. If there's no problem, which is what this transformer does here, determines if there wasn't a problem at all, no log file uh, errors found. If there are no problems, which is what this transformer does here, then I go on and I do a little bit of fancy stuff to bring the parameters of that job, so the names and the values and, and which uh, parameters such as the, the source data set um, and anything else you might have passed in the original job, takes those parameters, merges them onto the job here, and then performs the next step. Uh, in this case, I am creating a URL, which is uh, basically just submitting the next job. Um, in the future, you'll be able to use the FME server job submitter to do this, uh, and you won't need to build up this URL. But for now, I'm taking the source data set that came from the original job, and I'm appending it on here and saying, okay, next job, you should use this source data set, and you should run the job. And then the HTTP fetcher simply runs the next job, and then when that succeeds, again, we come back into this spot here, and the next one would have been the feature validation. Uh, workspace. So then we go through the next step, feature validation. We look at, we look for those error messages. We come through the same process and then we either notify if there's an error found using the log file searcher or we submit to the next job. And the next job defined in here being the load into database. So that is how it works. Um, it's uh, pretty powerful stuff for tying the workflows together. Again, the workflows don't have to uh, to know anything about each other. They just uh, The steps, I should say, don't need to know anything about each other. They just log messages and it's the controller that does all the heavy lifting of determining is this a good state? Should I pass it on? Should I run the next one? Should I notify? It has all the logic in it and that is kind of how you uh, can set up workflows, um, multiple step workflows, multiple workspace workflows in FME server. Uh, thank you for your time, and I'll end it off with the last slide here. Uh, if you have any more information, go to safe.com or fmepedia.safe.com to see this demo. Thanks for your time.